I'm Buddy Powell and I'm the president of Clearwater Marine Aquarium and the executive director of Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Institute. So we have a team that is doing the satellite tagging from boats on the water, but up here the water is not very clear and there's not that many manatees around. Um, they're fairly sparse, so we have to go searching for them. So that's my job is that I fly in an airplane searching for manatees in all this, these different waterways and then when we locate one, we'll orbit for as long as we need to so that the boats can arrive in order for them to be able to tag these individuals. He's about the same distance off the beach as you are. Sand is piled up. There's a little bit of a, I guess there's a watering hole there, but he's heading towards that. He's kicking up a lot of mud, so you should be able to see him. So the primary objective of this study is we know a lot about manatees when they're in Florida, but we know virtually nothing about manatees once they leave Florida. And what we're finding is that there are more and more manatees being sighted outside the state in Georgia, South Carolina, and even up to North Carolina. We've even had manatees go up to Cape Cod. So what we're trying to do is to find out more about, you know, why manatees are moving out of Florida during the warmer months, where they're going, and what they're doing when they're there. Monica Ross, I am the Director of Manatee Research and Conservation at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, the Research Institute. So one of the other cool parts about tagging some of these animals that are out of state is we can get a better understanding of when and how and why they come up into these areas to find food or shelter and then when they're actually going back to Florida. So the manatees that are in Georgia are actually manatees that are wintering in Florida during the winter time. They have to have warm water to survive. So having a very clear understanding of what travel routes that they're making, when they're making it, can really help us better understand their energetics and how they're surviving in this changing world. Dr. Adrian Atkins, I'm one of the veterinarians at the Georgia Aquarium. So as part of the overall uh, animal health of the population as a whole, we do want to assess these animals when they're in good condition and in ideal conditions. Part of our health assessments, we do collect blood samples. We're also collecting swabs for our cultures. We collect a fecal sample and urine when we can get it. Some of those samples will then go for uh, microbiome studies and also looking for viral and bacterial cultures on those animals. You'll also see that they get a transponder placed, uh, which is a pit tag, um, and it's for identification if those animals are caught again in the future as part of the overall um, big picture. We are very fortunate to be able to do work like this through the partnerships that we develop. We do work with a lot of different organizations and institutions as far as our health assessments go. Clearwater Marine Aquarium, along with Georgia Department of Natural Resources, and also the Georgia Aquarium. So we share samples as well as uh, in the field, we're all working together as part of these health assessments. And what we're trying to do is pull together funding, but also pull together expertise. It takes a village to do these things and we really appreciate all of our partners and everything that they do.